What? This kid might be a human calculator. Of 6x10 inch. 20 ticks. Correct. A rectangle has a length of 30 meters. 25 meters. Correct. Evaluate log 8 divided by log 1 over 4. Minus 3 over 2. Correct. There is no way I could do those questions that fast, but let me show you how you did them anyways. So the first question you did was to find the sum of 6x, 10x, and 12x. And the sum means we just add them, so 6x plus 10x plus 12x. And it's pretty easy to do, because when you have terms with the same exponent, aka x, you have to just add the coefficients, aka the numbers in front. 6 plus 10 is 16, plus 12, which is 18. And this just gives us 18x. Moving on to the second question, we have... A rectangle has a length of 30 meters and an area of 150 square meters. What's the difference between the length and the width? So let's first draw out a rectangle. Now, we know that it has a length of 30 meters, that gives us that, and an area of 100 square meters. So how do we figure out the area of a rectangle? That's just length times width. So our area, 150, is equal to 30 times some number, which we'll call x. And all we have to do, divide both sides by 30, and you end up with x is equal to 55 meters. So they're asking for the difference between the length and the width. Well, since we know that the length is 30 minus the width, which is 25, and that would be your answer. Now, moving on. To Evaluate log 8 divided by log 1 over 4. Minus 3 over 2. two. That's super impressive because this question is not an easy one. So the question is asking us to evaluate log of 8 divided by log of 1 fourth. Now, to do this, I'm going to rewrite 8 and 1 fourth. I know that 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2, which is the same as 2 to the third power. How about 1 fourth? 1 fourth is a little harder to spot, but this is actually equal to 2 to the negative 2, because this is just equal to 1 over 2 to the 2, which is equal to 1 over fourth. Now, I'm going to rewrite log of 8 as log of 2 to the third power, and then divided by log of 2 to the negative second, log of 1 fourth. And we have to simplify this because we have to remember this exponential rule where log of a to the b power is just the same as b times log of a so this is actually just equal to our power 3 to the log of 2 and this right here is equal to negative 2 to the log of 2 and this is pretty easy to solve because log of 2 and log of 2 cancel out just leaving you with what's here which is just 3 over negative 2 which is the same as negative 3 over 2 as your answer. X minus 3 into X plus 3. Correct. Okay, this might be the easiest question and one you could actually do in your head too. So the question is asking us to factorize X squared minus 9. And the thing is, you have to spot right away, this is known as the difference of squares, aka A squared minus B squared. And what is this equal to? This is just equal to A plus B times A minus B. I'm going to show you because if you FOIL, F-O-I-L, first, outer, inner, and last, first you have a times a, which is a squared. Next for outer, a times negative b gives us negative ab. For inner, which is b times a, gives us ab. And last, which is b times negative b, which gives us negative b squared. If you combine like terms, negative ab and ab cancel out, give you a squared minus b squared. So these two things are the same. Now, what squared do I see? I see x squared minus what squared? 9, as we know, is 3 squared. So as you can see, this is your a value, and this is going to be your b value. a plus b, which is x plus 3, times a minus b, which is x minus 3. a plus b, a minus b. And that right there is going to be your answer. 10 is 4 greater than the square root of an unknown number. What is the unknown number? 10, 6. I have no idea how he did this question in his head. So for our last question today, we have 10 is 4 greater than the square root of an unknown number. What is the unknown number? Now, basically, what we have to do is form an equation. So 10 is 4 greater, so that's 4 plus, than the square root of an unknown number. So the square root of a number we'll call x. And basically, we're just solving this. And what we have to do to get x by itself is get rid of this 4, which we can do by minusing 4 on both sides. 4 minus 4 cancels out. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. That's equal to the square root of x. Now, how do I get x by itself? I have to do the opposite of square rooting something, which means I square it. I do that on both sides. The idea is that the square root and the square would cancel out, just giving me x is equal to 6 squared, which is the same as 6 times 6, Leave me with final answer of 36 as my value of the unknown number. Because 4d equals to 5. D equals to minus 5 or 1. Correct. You might have gotten a little nervous, but this question is actually super easy.
To do this question, first we have to create a quadratic. And I can do this by moving 5 onto the other side. Because once I do this, I have 0 on the other side. I have d squared plus 4d minus 5 is equal to 0. Now, the reason why he was panicking was because he was trying to factorize this in his head. The idea is that we have to figure out what multiplies up to negative 5 adds up to 4. So the sum has to equal to negative 5 and adds up to 4. So what are your possibilities? So the sum multiplying to negative 5 has to be either positive 1, negative 5, or it can be negative 1, positive 5. So which one adds up to 4? Negative plus 1 minus 5, when you add those up, that gives you negative 4. Negative 1 plus 5, add them up, that gives you positive 4. So this is the combination we're looking for. So that means when you factor this, this becomes x minus 1, or d minus 1, times d plus 5. And then when we do this, when we solve for 0, we solve individually. So first we have d minus 1 is equal to 0. Add 1 on both sides, you end up with d is equal to positive 1. And the second equation becomes d plus 5 is equal to 0. Minus 5 on both sides, you end up with d is equal to negative 5. Therefore, your answers of d are both 1 and negative 5. Factor x minus 1 to x plus 4. Correct. Hold up. We literally saw this question two minutes ago. This looks very familiar, right? Because x squared minus 16, same thing as before. That's just equal to a squared minus b squared. And if you go back a couple of questions, what does a squared minus b squared equal to? That equals to a plus b times a minus b. So in x squared minus 16, what are my a and b values? Something squared, that's my a value. Minus something squared, that's going to be my b value. But first, I'm going to write that as x squared minus, what's the square root of 16? 4 squared. That's my a, and that's my b. Plug it into my equation, a plus b, same as x plus my b value, which is 4, times a minus b, which is x minus 4. And that right there is your factorized answer. Wow, this kid is truly amazing at math. I hope you guys enjoy watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.